this is this is great. This is 15 minutes of Do you just... like react to some of the moments or, or Yes. Oh my god, let's go through <laughs> cuz like walk us through. So you 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 respond to an ad. Um they're looking to sort of like book guests for this this show. They respond to you right away. Did they know who you were? They must have. They must have known who I'm you were. I'm not sure. I I just went in Instagram DMs and was like, hey, I have a unique perspective to offer on the show because I'm Catholic and uh, I believe in like abstinence until marriage. And I think that's like a wow. point of view that's rarely on the show. Um, and then, yeah, I got a response in the middle of the night, like pretty quickly. And this was like, I think back in April that I first went on. And then since then, I've done two other appearances. Oh, the wow. last two were a little more recent than that. Um, and one of them was the one that Destiny went on with his uh, wife, Melina, I think that's her name. Yeah. They were on there because they're talking about like polyamory and like having an open marriage, which is. Uh, I don't know unique. that that's possible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think those two, they look like they're pulling it off again. You can never really know what's inside somebody else's relationship and you can anybody can say whatever they need to say to make it seem like, Oh, it's working out beautifully. But I just, uh, I just think it's a ticking time bomb. And like, Mary, you are exactly, I think what the world needs more of right now, because I talk about this all the time with like women and men of like varying ages, but like, uh, I, I pray that more women like you will get on the scene and, and, uh, be vocal because there has just been, I actually, the boomers were brainwashed by feminism in a big way. Millennials, for sure, uh, brainwashed by feminism. And I think Gen Z is the first generation starting to kind of like wake up from it and be and 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 actually be able to detach themselves in a way like, oh, the, these behaviors and what's being pushed as part of the culture is is actually not in our best interest. And it's hard for, for I think, millennials and boomers to step back and and be real and honest about it because we've invested so much time and money like into our 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 bachelor's degree into our masters into you know getting one two divorces um you know if you're already at a point where you've had a hundred it's up to the hundred guys it's gonna be very hard for you to pull back and be like that actually wasn't the best course of action so i think that's why it's so important for like younger women like yourself to be outspoken about this because it's just, we've had multiple generations just basically telling women like, yeah, it's cool to sleep with as many guys as possible. You're not going to have feelings about it. You, you can, you can sleep around like a man, you can pursue a job like a man and, and you won't, you'll be better off for it. And it's bullshit because we're just not, well, a lot of us are not wired to be fulfilled from that course of action. All right, the chat is very anxious for me to play the clip. Okay, here we go. We'll we'll sort okay, of um, okay. we'll blow through it, and hopefully, I think there were a lot of fantastic moments in here. So we'll. Play do you it. do OnlyFans? How much do you make, Nicolette? It's like kind of tacky to say like exactly <laughs> how much money you make. I mean, it's, it's tacky not... to be on OnlyFans in the first place. Ah! <laughs> you love their reaction too. I love like this. how love they weren't this. expecting that at all. Look at their face. I love how <laughs> this is what the you're what the world needs more of because I just I feel like society uh the only way to be confident as a woman for many years seems like to just sleep around like that's that those are at least the messages that I got growing up like don't be feminine uh be have a lot of sex be detached from it and uh, basically that's not cool to kind of save yourself for someone you actually like. You know, everyone watches porn, so why? That's not true either. Well, a lot you of know? people do, and I feel like it doesn't really matter, you know? Some so if everybody turns You're throwing around there's a lot of generalities. Of there, there's plenty of people in really healthy, really good relationships with children. With their and mothers who Yeah, and they, do, and they were adult film. And, yeah. But your kids It is what can't. it is. If they find it, they find it. I'm not going to, like, I'm obviously uh, going to try to make sure they don't. But if I think a lot of these women who, um, and I'm friends with a lot of women who do porn and do OnlyFans. And and I feel like there's a very small percentage of women who are built who have like the constitution to like be great at it. And 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 I feel like a lot of them though, it's like a piece of their soul gets taken out. And oh yeah, just, this girl, that girl who's talking with the red hair, she literally admitted that doing porn made her feel like she was losing a part of herself every uh, time that she did it. 
And she said this out loud while smiling. And then she was like, well, yeah, like at first doing porn, it just like, it kind of made me feel like I was losing my part, part of myself. And like, you know, then I just kind of like ignored that feeling and I kept going and then it was fine. Uh. Like, and, and she said this like totally straight faced and all of the girls around the table heard it too. But she seems very I, resigned to it, even the way she said, well, yeah. everyone watches porn. So it's like, if you can't beat them, join them. And I know, I definitely know that right. feeling. Cause like, uh, there, I just feel like there's a large group of women who feel like, yeah, it's, it's inevitable. Like every guy you'll ever be with is going to be at least moderately to severely addicted to porn. And, and it's just kind of like this feeling of, it's not like you can request a guy not to watch porn or watch less porn. It's like, it's inevitable. So just get basically get on board with it. She just seems very resigned to the fact that. Yeah. But it says a lot about the kind of guys that they're surrounding themselves with. And there's a part of this compilation. I think that uh, the girl, the blonde girl on the corner, she says like, I feel like a lot of guys would be like turned off by that though. If I said I wasn't going to have sex with them until right. marriage, or if I delayed having sex with them until a certain point in the relationship. And I was like, I, I think that says more about the guys that you're dating than anything. It, it says more about them than you, if they're not, not willing to wait. And also any guy who is serious looking for a relationship or who, who's marriage minded, he would consider like one year or two years of waiting nothing compared to a lifetime of commitment with you. Right. And a lot of people make, make fun of, or, um, dunk on this podcast a lot because, Oh, it's just, it's just dumb women who make themselves look bad and they make them look bad. But I think every so often, like you do get nice nuggets of, of honesty and vulnerability out of these women. And it is a good insight into seeing like, where feminism like where culture has brought us in terms of like the this is how these women actually feel and they just it, it's like a confidence crisis like a lot of women think the only thing they have of value is like is their sexuality and if you grow up around porn all the time and you look at the women like who get the most likes or the most attention or or whatever uh you go oh i have to act like that to be high value like i I, you know what I mean? Like all women kind of want attention and to be looked at, but just for different reasons, you know, everyone wants to be noticed and be special men too. Um, but it's like, it's just, it's really interesting because it, a lot of them truly feel like this is the only, this is the only way I can bring value. And this is the only way I'll get uh, noticed. Right. And a lot of them cloak that with like, oh, I'm just doing OnlyFans because it's great money. And for some of them, that's true. If they're in like the top one or 0.1 or 0.01% of OnlyFans, they are making a lot of money, but none of that is worth the the cost to your soul, your relationships and your future or your future family if you end up having one. Yeah, it's really and great money now. Like I think that they're makes six figures. That they're after the... Yeah. Yeah, they're after they they claim they're after the money, even if they get it. Um, it it's it, like having material comforts or monetary security is just nothing compared to having actual emotional security. And I think a lot of them are chasing after that dopamine rush of like getting male attention, but will cloak that with like, oh, no, I'm just like using them like they're they're my simps and I'm in control. But in reality, they're the ones getting used. And they're not able to see uh, past, you know, the next couple of years of their life. They're not able, they may want kids, but they're not at all thinking like how their kids will experience um, finding their content. You know, they, they may want to eventually find a husband and get married, but they're not thinking about how the kind of guy they want to end up with will experience, you know, will perceive them in this kind of work or how, uh, it will change the type of men who pursue them or don't pursue them. And it, it's just, they're not seeing it because they're like, we're all young and stupid, but like, it's, it's sad to, to see them like, okay, you're pursuing this momentary big money job, uh, at the cost of maybe things that are going to be more important to you for the rest of your life. Yeah, I don't know if you saw this. I was talking about this today on Pop Culture Crisis. There was this OnlyFans model named L. Brooke who went on Pierce Morgan Uncensored. And he essentially, he, he didn't even really criticize her that harshly. He was just saying the same thing you're saying, like, well, what if you want to have kids someday 
and they end up getting bullied when they're showed shown this content that you were in you were doing porn and she ended up uh making her like writing an article about it and saying that this question is misogynistic and it's just aimed mm -hmm. at antagonizing sex workers but just because one person asked you that in bad faith doesn't mean that everyone asking you that question is asking in bad faith it's a genuine concern and this girl at 25 although she's claiming now that she doesn't want kids or she's you know just trying to live her own life and be single and live for herself in the future that obviously could change um yeah. that but that like even that concern i think is like totally periphery to like i'm just concerned about the effects on this individual right now like forget about 10 20 or 30 years from now this is soul crushing to do in the moment regardless of the the pros that you're seeing in it now the cons far outweigh them and i think a lot of people are too uh cowardly honestly they don't have the moral courage to come right out and say like i find this uh, online prostitution gig viscerally disgusting like i i think that we all like kind of feel that in our conscience because we all know what's right and wrong and if you have a moral problem with people do doing only fans uh, whether it's male or males or females it's not really a sex issue um then come right out and say that you have a moral problem with it instead of bringing up all of these peripheral uh, pragmatic concerns like if an 18 year old girl who's like right out of high school or a girl going right out of college is thinking of making an only fans your response to that shouldn't be oh well um you're probably not going to make that much money off of it you're probably going to make the average which is about 200 dollars a month she's not looking for the money. She's looking for affirmation and approval and believes that her sexuality is all she has to offer or put on the table. So you need to, you know, affirm her that she has an identity outside of that instead of just focusing on the, the material concerns. It's not about the money for her, even if she claims that it is. Right. And if you're, uh, like the type of girl who loves social media anyway, and you're on it and you're all about like perfecting your pictures anyway, and maybe you are filtering or maybe you're, airbrushing face tuning and you're into just like maybe there is a, an artistic element to that too and if you add that into oh i can make a living off this i feel like it has all of the dopamine hit of gambling but you get like you win every time because it's like the attention and the rush but you're like oh and i'm getting paid and uh you just i think you just think that that's gonna you're gonna be a one of those you know top earners and that it, and that it'll last well, yeah, I mean, beauty fades. That's just a fact of life. As you age, your value in that respect is going to get lower and lower. And you're going to start thinking about what you really value in life. And the loneliness is going to set in. And that that cost for them is not something that I'm going to revel in. I'm not going to relish seeing them um, reach that stage of life where, you know, time is going to punish them. I don't I'm not that disillusioned yet. And I think that they need to be offered an off ramp from this right. lifestyle. And you can't just tell them that they're worthless after doing OnlyFans. Like this is still a person, and you know, right? Any, yeah, any you be forced to wear, um, you know, an A on your chest for the rest of your life. Like yeah. you, yeah. I and I didn't I, want to come off on this on whatever or any any time. I don't want to come off like I'm moralizing just for the sake of it just to make them feel bad about themselves i didn't want to come off as someone who's just shaming them so that i can feel better about myself and put myself on a pedestal like i right. genuinely wanted to reach them and i hope i did i'm not sure but it, right. it just seems like nobody is pushing back on this stuff i'm gonna click through this a little more find it. whatever you know so if everyone jumps they would off find a cliff, it by their peers well, sending it to though. them that's really different do you oh, realize that they would they would find the this by other kids sending it to them? Well, honestly, like oh, anything you do can be yeah. used against you. You're anything literally. that's such a cope. <laughs> and like us people being are gonna right bully regardless. And you you don't think that <laughs> one is worse than the other? Exactly. You don't think that you know being on a podcast and talking about dating culture is like a little less embarrassing for a kid than their mother sucking dick on camera. <laughs> Really? I, mean, I guess. But we, and we're definitely in the next 10 years going to start 
hearing from just like we're starting to hear from detransitioners more we're gonna start hearing from kids whose parents you know did only fans did porn and we're time will tell the effect it'll have on them yeah i mean it's already happening but it's going to accelerate i I, I was just imagining that, like, are my kids in the future going to get bullied by other kids pulling up clips of me on the whatever podcast? <laughs> like, be real. Your mom? Are they gonna be pulling up, like, videos of, of me from 10 years prior uh, on Pop Culture Crisis being like, haha, look, your mom was a podcaster. Like, it was just such a ridiculous rebuttal. I, I never understood that one. Yeah, that's true. I think about that too. Like you could you could totally take clips where I'm describing uh like a a threesome that was not worth it. That was like, you know what I mean? Like just where I, but it's like a cautionary tale and anything can be clipped, but I would hope that anything if I have a kid and they end up finding something online, I'll be able to like explain it to them be like, "Look, your mom was just trying to make people laugh and warn people against uh unsatisfying sexual decisions." <laughs> I was listening to this really great episode. It was uh, Theo Vaughn and Roseanne. I was listening to it like just before we started. And I mean, I could not love Roseanne anymore. And as I'm listening to her speak, I was like, oh my God, like this is what I'm missing in my life. Because uh, my mom died like five years ago and just listening to like this like sassy, hilarious woman in her 70s. Like she's so wise. She's so funny. It just made me realize like, oh, my God, I really miss my mom. But at the same time, like I love listening to Roseanne. And Roseanne was talking about like how feminism has screwed over women. And she was saying like feminism has convinced women that you don't need men. It's like, yes, you do need men because <laughs> you're hysterical for half the month. And men are like the calm, stoic, like their energy. They're they're more even keeled throughout the month than women are. And men need to be the one to like throw down the discipline. Like if you have kids, like women can't do that. And I'm like, yes, all problems are because like women think they don't need men. And our society is like, so feminized because people equate criticism with attack and it's uh yeah I, I think our society is very toxically feminine right now there's a like a very toxic dynamic that sometimes manifests on on the whatever podcast where one side of the table is all of these like only fans girls or just like liberal feminist college girls and then the other side of the table is like these manosphere red pill type of guys and they're just like butting heads and expressing the extremes of both ends of the spectrum. And, and the reason that I wanted to go on there is like offer a little bit of nuance and also um, help them understand that like there are girls your age who are, uh, you know, they have a different perspective. And like I understand 100% their frustrations with the, the male population. And I share a lot of them, but the difference is you don't need to respond in kind and you don't need to opt out entirely from trying your, like to be a good example. Like the, these girls, especially the, the two on the end there, they were like 18 years old or like 19. And wow. I'm sure all of their experience with guys has been negative. And they just will paint the whole male population with that brush and decide like, I guess this is it. I guess this is all that I can hope for. Um, but like, they don't realize that they're deserving of such better treatment and that they have inherent value. And it goes so much beyond just their sexuality, their sex appeal. And that's like, they are obviously like beautiful girls and that's uh, something they should use to their best advantage in life but it's not all you have to offer and you're not going to have that forever. Yeah. I liked your approach of like going in here uh, and thinking, I want to try to help these women. Cause I'm sure it would be very easy for you to be like condescending. And like, I, I feel like one side of the table might be a little bit older, wiser, maybe smarter than one other side of the table. Not saying that these women are dumb or whatever, but I've noticed with a lot of the, whatever podcast clips, it seems like, what you're describing the red pilled men that are on the other side it's not i don't think it, it seems a lot like the conversation isn't them trying to genuinely help these women to me it just seems like you're watching these guys do you know like a 
like a gymnastics pass, like round off back handspring backflip. It's like performative. Like, look how smart I am. Look how, look, I stuck this landing. And I think of like, I guess I think of, uh, what's his name? John Doyle. Very smart, but like his, when he speaks, it's very much like, look at me. Um, I don't think he's trying to connect with these women or make their lives better. He's just trying to be right. And, and like, of course that's an ego thing that I feel like men sometimes more have than women, but I just don't think, yes, it makes for great content, but I, um, I would love to see like more connection, I think on this podcast. Yeah. And I, I went into it not looking for approval from either the girls at the table or from the host even, or from the chat. And it ended up being that a lot of the people in the comment section, although a lot of them had like positive things to say about me, a lot of the men in the comment section were like, oh, this isn't like the content that I'm used to from whatever. This girl is trying to hold men to a certain standard. And that's not fair because women aren't keeping up their end of the deal and blah, blah, blah. You know, Mary's taking this too far. You know, she has totally unrealistic expectations of men. And like, I don't care what she says. I'm not waiting until marriage for any uh, any of these hoes. Like, <laughs> but it, it's just like, that's not a constructive point of view. And we're never going to get out of this mess if we don't take personal accountability first and stop shitting on the other gender whether you're male or female like that is not going to solve the problem love you guys thank you for the chats thank you for the comments i will see you guys tomorrow bye bye all right love you guys oh, i don't even want to leave this candle smells so good i don't want to leave all right love you guys talk to you soon bye love you all join the discord feet love you all wow you guys are awesome Bye guys. Bye. Now I'm really leaving. Love you. Bye.